What's up, Taiwan? I'm Ethan Liu with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. China has slammed Taiwan's President Lai ching for comments he made in the National Day Address on Thursday, prompting reactions from both Taipei and Washington. Rhys Ayers reports. Yet more rhetoric as Beijing responds to President Lai ching Der's National Day speech, particularly regarding comments he made about Taiwan and China not being subordinate to one another. China's foreign ministry saying that Lai is deliberately severing the historical connection between the two sides, accusing him of selling a fallacy of Taiwanese independence and of having sinister intentions of increasing cross-strait tensions for political gain. Taiwan did respond by saying that China should understand the goodwill expressed by the president in his speech and to face the reality of cross-strait relations. Washington also weighing in, saying they don't want to speculate on China's reactions, but saying that there's no justification for a military response to what's essentially just an annual celebration, urging Beijing to act with restraint. Now, Lai's speech was a lot more conciliatory than many were expecting, some even calling it moderate. It was an olive branch of sorts to China that Beijing's refusing to take. There hasn't been much of a military response from China as yet, though some are anticipating bigger drills around Taiwan over the weekend, though if, when and how those happen is anybody's best guess. Beijing could respond more indirectly by, for example, imposing more tariffs or restrictions on Taiwanese imports to China. But for now at least, Lai's less confrontational tone in his speech hasn't prompted any drastic responses from Beijing. Eason Pan, Alex Chen and Reese Ayers in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has expressed concerns about China's actions at sea. We remain concerned about China's increasingly dangerous and unlawful actions in the South and East China Seas, which have injured people and harmed vessels from ASEAN nations and contradict commitments to peaceful resolution of disputes. Speaking at the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN Summit, Blinken said China's actions in the disputed waters are putting more pressure on regional allies. He said the U.S. will continue to support freedom of navigation and overflight in the Indo-Pacific. The ASEAN Summit is taking place in Bianqian, Lao. Blinken also said the U.S. remains committed to protecting stability in the Taiwan Strait. Two factory accidents an hour apart have hit a town in Yunlin County. Inspectors have shut the plants down for safety violations, putting a new focus on the state of workplace safety rules. John Mentress reports. It was shortly after 9 on Thursday morning when Ms. Huang fell into this trash compactor, killing her. She'd worked for over a decade at this recycling plant in the Yunlin County town of Doliu. The conveyor belt had gotten stuck, and all she'd done was check to make sure the machine wasn't broken. By the time the plant's owner realized something was wrong, it was too late. In addition to shocked family members, workplace safety inspectors were soon at the scene. In the same town, barely an hour later, an Indonesian migrant worker was nearly buried alive at this cement factory. They'd gone down to work in a deep rock pit when a conveyor belt above that had gotten stuck suddenly started moving again, bringing an avalanche of stone. Thanks to a safety harness they were wearing, firefighters were able to rescue this worker. But it was a close call. Both factories broke an important work safety rule by not shutting off malfunctioning conveyor belts. They've both been shut down and fined a little over 9,000 U.S. dollars. But how to stop accidents like this in the first place? It's an especially tough question where migrant workers are concerned. NGO Global Workers Organization Taiwan says they are two and a half times more likely to suffer a workplace accident than their Taiwanese counterparts. And small or medium-sized companies are where these accidents are most likely to happen due to lack of proper procedures.
那就是呃。给个给个例子，就是大多数的移工或者是工人，他们都会倾向于，哎，我自己去处理这事情。就是如果有机器发生问题，我会自己自己去处理问题。但是大多数的 SOP 的话，会是说他们需要把它停机。This and proper safety training, as mandated by the government, are what this group believes are the best ways of overcoming Taiwan's work safety problem, a problem these two accidents have thrown back into public attention. James Lin and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Survivors of Hurricane Milton in the southeastern United States are asking what's next as they begin a painful and difficult cleanup. For some, fulfilling their basic needs remains a daunting challenge. Green Thomas reports. Gerald Gilchrist wades into the flooded street that runs through his battered neighborhood. The 77-year-old Floridian wrote out Hurricane Milton, unsure of what would happen to him and his home, but determined to stick it out. Well, it was an experience that only thing I got left in my life. <laughs> if it was going to go, I was going to go too. So I was trying to protect it, you know. But if I had to do it again, I don't think I would. Uh, matter of fact, during the storm, I thought about that, you know, that I made a bad decision. <laughs> Still, this is the worst storm he's seen in 11 years in the state. And other long-term residents of his hurricane-prone region agree. At the Atlanta Motor Speedway in neighboring Georgia, over a dozen Florida families are waiting until it's safe to go home. In any previous storm, including Helene just two weeks ago, Michael Clem wouldn't have considered evacuating, much less fleeing the state. But this hurricane was unlike anything he'd ever seen. None of the other storms. I've been there for 36 years in the same area. Never once have I been scared. Like, I got to get up and go. Maybe go to a little bit safer location, High elevation, because there were sometimes I lived on the water, but for the most part, it was just stay where I'm at. I'm good. This is the first one in 35 years that I was scared of. The families here are relieved their home seem to have escaped serious damage, but not everyone is so lucky. Crystal Coleman's house was one of those destroyed by the many tornadoes the hurricane spawned. For her, the shock of a loss is coupled with an uncertain future. I need somewhere to stay at. I need somewhere to lay my head. Me and my daughter. I need clothing, my clothes are destroyed. Everything inside of my house is destroyed. The U.S. government is working on a response. President Joe Biden even suggested Congress come back from recess to speed up recovery. But on the ground in Florida, many who made it through the storm are still in survival mode. Chris Ma, John Von Trieste, and Bryn Thomas for Taiwan Plus. Life has not yet returned to normal for residents of Taiwan's Orchid Island, a year after Typhoon Koinu ripped across the island community, flattening buildings and knocking out power and communication. Rick Lauer reports. Ushering in a new start with an old tradition. Villagers set off in teams from Taiwan's Orchid Island, the first race since a deadly typhoon struck here one year ago. 那刚好我们去年经历了一个很严重的小犬台风，那这台风几乎让整个岛都摧毁掉。那我觉得今天很开心，可以看到大家好像有一种复原的感觉。因为我们六个镇都在一起，很热闹，有跳舞的，有画冰板做的，有卖东西的，什么都有，所以哎，今天很开心，又是看到很久没有看到的朋友，哎，所以很开心。This time last year, life on Orchid Island was disrupted. When Typhoon Koinu brought record high winds of more than 200 kilometers per hour, knocking out electricity, communications, and transport links, cutting off this isolated island community home to the indigenous Dao. For centuries, the Dao people have marked the changing seasons with traditional canoe races like this. It's a chance for the whole island to come together and celebrate their unique seafaring heritage and culture. This year, it's also proof that life must go on despite the hardships. And although this is a joyous occasion, many islanders are still struggling to return to normalcy. Orchid Island's 5,000 residents rely on traditional farming, fishing, and tourism to get by. For the last year, the island's main road, connecting villages around the coast, has been a construction site. 
repairing typhoon damage and moving electric cables underground to avoid power outages in the future is making slow progress. Materials and manpower must be shipped in from Taiwan's main island. Accustomed to relying on themselves, many Dao have rebuilt homes and businesses on their own. They say their needs, particularly at a time of crisis, are not always understood by the national administration in Taipei. Many island residents are still struggling against bureaucracy to get disaster subsidies. Central government paperwork doesn't quite match the reality of life here. For one, this village hasn't managed to secure the funds to fix their pig yard, caught in a grey area between private and public property. These traditions, unique to the Dao, keep them connected to their environment. At one with their island, over the last year, the Dao have repaired or replaced half of the boats damaged by Typhoon Koinu, a labor of love and meticulous craftsmanship. These vessels, now showing their metal for the first time, a display of indigenous tenacity in the face of the wind and the waves. <laughs> Luffy Lee, Peachy Zhuang and Rick Lowert on Orchid Island for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's Vice President Bi Kim Shao has joined forces with Olympic boxing champion Lin Yuting to inspire the next generation of women leaders. Harrell Hughes tells us more. On International Day of the Girl, dozens of people have gathered here in Taipei to meet some of Taiwan's top women leaders, including Vice President Bikram Shao and Olympic gold medalist Lin Yuting. Shao telling the crowd how Taiwanese women have demonstrated incredible leadership potential that is critical for the future, especially for Taiwan. Today's event, called Being Dazzling, is organized by Taiwan's Ministry of Education to encourage women to pursue their goals, despite the challenges they may face. A goal highlighted by Olympic boxer Lin Yuting in her address. Uh, Speakers here may come from very different backgrounds and fields, but there's one thing they all have in common. They're among the best at what they do. And they all have a clear message. Women need to be and deserve to be leadership, not just here in Taiwan, but around the world. Justin Wu, Jeffrey Chen, and Harrell Hughes in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Japan's Nihon Hidankyo organization has won the Nobel Peace Prize for trying to rid the world of nuclear weapons. The Norwegian Nobel Committee praised the grassroots organization for their work and for, quote, demonstration through witness testimony that nuclear weapons must never be used again. Nihon Hidankyo was formed by survivors of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Time Plus website and follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, check out the restoration of the centerpiece at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, said to be unveiled at the end of October. I'm Ethan Liu, take care, and I'll see you next time. For more stories from here in Honolulu, Hawaii and around the world, make sure to visit us on social media.